Hello gems, welcome back to a brand new video. So today we are starting with the question bank series for BitSat 2025 and today is episode 1 which means we are starting with the very first chapter of 11th standard. So I'll be there for you this BitSat 2025 from the very first chapter of 11th standard to the very last chapter of 12th standard. Okay, so uh, let's put in the efforts this time and let's crack it. Okay, so let me briefly take you to this question bank series. What are its features? If you have missed out the video on announcement. So basically in this series, uh, we are going to firstly see strategize. Okay, so we are going to see the topics and their weightage, the previous year weightage over uh, about 15 years of BitSAC. Okay, so uh, through this, we'll come to know which is the most important topic in a certain chapter. Okay, so you can selectively put your focus on that particular topic. Of course, we uh, for BitSat, I don't recommend that you skip any of the topics in a chapter. If you are doing a certain chapter, you do it really well. Okay, so but you'll get a, a brief idea about which topic to essentially focus on. Okay, so uh, this is for example for this chapter, right? Units and dimensions. This is the weightage. Also, as the name suggests, question bank series. So we are going to discuss following this a uh, question bank about 10 questions from this chapter uh, based on this weightage. Okay, so you'll get a hang of it. Okay, so uh, without further ado, uh, let's begin with this video. Okay, also I'll uh, be there for you with the guidance and strategies. Okay, for BitSat 2025, it's not just series. I'm there with you for BitSat 2025 in and out. Okay, so uh, if you are uh, uh, an aspirant who wish to crack it, do consider subscribing. Uh, really means a lot to me. So let's begin with the video. Let's go through the topic wise PYQ weightage for the chapter of units and dimensions. Okay, so from units, so they might ask you to tell a unit of a particular physical quantity. So only one question as such was asked or they can ask you for unit conversion N1 U1 is equal to N2 U2. Then the most important topic in this chapter is dimensions. Okay, 16 questions uh, were asked from this particular topic and uh, they might ask you for dimensional consistency, they might ask you for uh, to find the dimensions of a certain physical quantity given that it depends on certain other physical quantities, right? So uh, those type of questions, uh, we'll look into the questions uh, in the question bank part. Okay, so then we have error analysis, only two questions from that being asked, also significant figures. So you have a particular calculation, maybe uh, they might ask you to calculate volume given length, breadth and height, okay? But it's not just multiplying those three uh, numbers, right? You just have to, you also have to consider the significant figures. So, so two questions from there were asked. Measuring instruments so far, no questions have been asked. These include your one year caliper and micrometer screw gauge, okay? So, so far no questions were asked from this particular topic. Also. Uh, commenting on the chapter, units and dimensions for BitSat is a very important topic and it's a very simple topic, okay? If you get the hold of this dimensions, everything else is very easy, okay? So uh, if you get, uh, and by practice, you can easily do it, okay? It's one of the simplest and the first simplest, easiest chapter uh, that is out there, okay? So do focus on it and if you are answering BitSat 2025, mark my words, at least one, uh, one to two questions will be there from this chapter in your BitSat paper, irrespective of the shift, okay? So it's an important chapter. It will give you about uh, plus three, plus three, six, or more marks in BitSat 2025. So let's begin our practice with the questions. Okay, so by the way, all these questions are picked up from Photo Club question bank book, this book. Uh, it is not a promotion. Um, I'm just telling you the source so that you know the questions are credible, okay, because some of you might be um, curious about the credibility of this question, right? So let's begin. Uh, first, we are supposed to find the percentage error in the measurement of G, okay? G is given as this. Um, they might not give you this. You are expected to know this. You'll know this from the formula T is equal to 2 pi under root L by G, okay? From there, you can make this G subject and you can find uh, the error, okay? Given L and given T. L and T are given with their respective error bar. Okay, these are error bars, delta L and delta T. Okay, so you can see that this G depends on, just uh, make it a subject, bring this over here, square it on both sides, you'll get this, okay? So here, uh, uh, we can see that G depends on L and T square, right? So we are supposed to find the percentage error, which is delta G by G. This is relative error, right? Delta G by G. 
into 100% will make it percentage error and if you see ln t I told you right so it will be delta l by l into 100% so when the terms are in mm, multiplication or division what do you do you add their relative errors or you add their percentage error so g percentage error in g will be percentage error in l plus percentage error in t so percentage error in l plus percentage error in t but don't forget this is squared right what happens to that square it comes in the uh, down in the numerator okay so here we have into 100 percent right this is uh, if you go by the derivation if you have powers uh, they come down right in case of error um, and um, okay let's calculate this now what is delta l this is delta l right this is l delta l, l with its error bar okay so this is the error bar delta l so 0 0.1 divided by uh, what is that 10 that is like 1 percent that uh, plus so 2 into 1 upon 100 so again 1 percent and into 2 into 100 right so you can see this and this will get cancelled 10 cancels this and 0.1 into 10 is 1 so 1 percent over here plus uh, this is cancelled so 2 percent right so 2 percent plus 1 percent is 3 percent okay which is option C. So, 3 percent quite straightforward questions we are just supposed to know the logic right the logic of error analysis. Let's come to this one more question on errors. So, the error in the measurement due to unpredictable fluctuations in temperature and voltage R. Now, the keyword over here is unpredictable fluctuations okay. Uh, you can see all of this some of them most of them are systematic right you can predict its source like if you see instrumental errors arise due to instruments right. Um, um, due to uh, wrong calibration of the instrument you can say you can have zero error right uh, the sale the scale is not set to zero at the initial reading at zero okay so these these errors are due to instruments they are uh, sources predictable you can see personal errors are due to personal bias right you might be inclined to take one this reading uh, as preferred uh, preferred over some other reading this is personal bias okay the uh, you can pinpoint the source okay so predictable source least count due to least count of the instrument right uh, suppose one year caliber it has some least count, right it cannot measure decimal places beyond that okay so it's the very nature of that instrument least count right so uh, again for this three you can predict the source for here they are saying it's unpredictable fluctuation right so which means of course the errors should be random you cannot predict them right it's happening randomly you can't predict the source of that error this these three are quite systematic that will be the right term okay and uh, one more uh, key fact i'll tell you that in order to reduce random errors you can take multiple readings okay more readings and then take the average so that you reduce the randomization so every time there is some random error but uh, the errors are random every time okay so they'll cancel out each other when you take the mean okay so uh, the key to reduce your random errors is to take multiple readings and then take the average okay though that's about these two questions over to the next question 3 and 4 over here in question 3 we are choosing force acceleration and time as our fundamental physical quantities okay and then we are supposed to tell the dimensions of energy okay this is one more classic way of asking you a question regarding dimensional analysis because you can do it simply by the same logic so the dimensions of energy you are supposed to express it in terms of force I'll use x y z because there is a for acceleration so force acceleration and time right so you can do it this way okay so uh, even such questions are done using dimensional analysis okay so uh, now this proportionality you can replace by equality right and uh, what is the dimensions of energy mass into velocity square half mv square right so mass into velocity uh, which is length per unit time so l2 t raised to minus 2 okay uh, i expect you to know a uh, certain dimensions by heart like the energy force okay those are simple quantities and you are expected to know them by heart uh, force is mass into acceleration so mass into acceleration m uh, into l t raised to minus 2 x and acceleration uh, is L t raised to minus 2 y and it is dependent on time to the power z ok. So, we are supposed to our objective is to find this x y z right. So, we will know how they are dependent how the energy 
can be written in this format. Okay, so uh, if we see what are the powers of m, only x over here, right? L we have uh, x plus y, right? Okay, so L will have L to the power x and L to the power y. So same base, add the powers, right? X plus y. And for t, you can see it is minus 2x minus 2y from here and plus z, right? So these are the different quantities, okay? Now we can relate uh, this and we can compare the coefficients, right? M, M. So M has power 1 on the left hand side. So X should be equal to 1. So we'll get three different equations. Here, second equation will be X plus Y is equal to 2, right? Which implies X, uh, X is 1. So Y should also be 1, 1 plus 1, 2, right? And finally, we'll have minus 2X minus 2Y plus Z is uh, on the left hand side we have minus 2 okay so this will give us so x and y both are y right so this is minus 2 minus 2 plus z is minus 2 right this and this can cancel so we will get basically z as 2 right z will be 2 so x is 1 so what is x x is the power of f right x is the power of f so x is 1 y is also 1, a is also 1, 1, 1 and t is, t is z, z is 2, okay, z is 2, so f a t square, right square, okay, so option d, f a t and t square, f a and t square, okay, so those are the dimensions of energy in this, uh, if these are chosen at the, as the fundamental physical quantity, okay, now we are given a substance of this many grams and it occupies this much volume, okay, centimeter cube, that is volume. So, you are supposed to tell the density, okay, and they have also told you to take the significant figures into account, okay, and sometimes uh, they might not mention this, okay, that you have to take in account the significant figures, okay. So, whenever you run across such a questions where they are, they have given you simple calculation, right, because your density is mass by volume, okay, so you just have to divide two quantities, right, so it is not that simple, you have to uh, take in account the significant figures every time okay every time there is a simple calculation as like this okay just having uh, you add two quantities or divide them or multiply them you have to consider the rules of significant figures okay so here what is the density mass by volume so mass is 5.74 uh, by 1.2 now unfortunately you'll have to carry it out manually right uh, or you can go via the options okay you can multiply so you can choose one one density values and multiply 1.2 and see if you get 5.74 that will it also can be done okay here i have it calculated uh, it was about 4.783 okay so you are lucky that value wise it is uh, only close to this or this or you can see that when you drop it will be around this is apt right or let's go by the actual way the significant figures this is in grams per centimeter cube of course and what does the rule say the rule say in multiplication or division the rule is you have to uh, retain the those many digits as the least num uh, as the number with least number of significant figures so the least number of significant figures over here are 1 and 2 this has this number has 3 but this number has 2 so we have to retain only two significant figures right so drop this 3 dropping 3 does not make any difference dropping 8 is greater than 5 so you have to raise the previous digit by 1 right so drop 8 and you will get 4.8 so this is the value that they are looking for option c okay so that is the correct choice over to the next question question 5 we are supposed to find the dimensional formula for each of this quantity now in the book of course it was a match the following and there were objective it was objective type question but uh, the gist of the question is this right you are supposed to find the dimensional formula for each of this quantity okay now uh, instead of breaking my head on each one of it i can use some common sense this is potential energy right gravitational potential energy basically energy energy has the dimension m l2 t raised to minus 2 right half mv square or mgh whatever you do you will get uh, m l2 t raised to minus 2 now gravitational potential uh, can i derive it from uh, potential energy yes 
Uh, so if you see uh, what is electric potential, let's learn it by the analogy. You'll have K Q1, Q2 by R, right? Uh, then uh, if you want to uh, find the potential, what do you do? You divide by this one of the test charge, right? So K Q by R, right? You divide by one of the charge, okay? So here similarly uh, in gravity, we have G M M by R, right? So you have to, in order to get to the potential, you have to divide by the mass. Okay, so basically uh, here you'll have to divide by mass, right? Both are conservative type of forces, you'll know more about it. Uh, but anyways, here you are just supposed to divide by mass. Mm -hmm. Just like here you are dividing by charge, charge is analogous to mass in gravity. Okay, so here if you want potential from potential energy divided by mass, so that means it is L2 T raised to minus 2. Okay, those are the dimensions of your gravitational potential. Uh, what can we do for gravitational intensity? I know that it is G, okay, it is G, basically acceleration due to gravity, acceleration. Acceleration is this, right, L T raised to minus 2, rate of change of velocity, right, and velocity is rate of change of position, L T raised to minus 2, or you can, for G you can use, so if you know gravitational intensity is G, you can use G M by R square, you can remember this as G M is equal to G R square. Okay, this is the formula. So from here also you can find, uh, provided you know this gravitational constant. Now gravitational constant, some of you might know it by heart. It's one of the important quantities, but we'll derive it. Okay, so let's be not hard on ourselves. So F is G M M by R square, right? And put dimensions on both the sides. So if we want G, what will it be? G is the dimensions of G. Uh, will be F R square. So F I am writing M L T raised to minus 2, right? Mass into acceleration. Uh, R square, which is L square. And then M M, right? Both have dimensions of mass. So M square. So what do we get? This is M power 1 minus 2. So M minus 1. L is 1 and plus 2, 3. And T raised to minus 2. Okay, so this is, uh, where is that? M Mm -hmm. m minus 1 l 3 t raised to minus 2 okay so this is your gravitational constant and from there you can find your gravitational intensity if you multiply m you see this and that will go and r square so uh, only one l will remain right l t raised to minus 2 that's what i told you right or basically gravitational intensity is g acceleration due to gravity acceleration over to the next question because these two questions over here, in question 6, we are supposed to find the least count of a screw gauge. Okay, we are told that the circular scale uh, completes two rotation. When it completes two rotation, the distance uh, on the pitch scale, which is the linear scale, is 1 millimeters. Okay, it's the scale behind that circular e, right? So, uh, the distance covered uh, when you complete two rotations of the circular scale uh, is 1 millimeter. Uh, the total number of circular scale divisions is 50, you are supposed to tell the least count. The least count uh, of screw gauge, you will need two things, pitch and the uh, number of circular scale divisions, right? So uh, what is pitch? Pitch is the linear distance covered in one complete rotation, right? And we are given the linear distance, so pitch scale is basically the linear scale, okay? So we are given uh, uh, one millimeter is covered in two rotations, so two rotations we need one millimeter. Okay, but uh, let's divide this on both sides by 2. So one rotation will need half a millimeter, which is 0.5 millimeter, right? This is nothing but our pitch, right, if you see, because uh, what is pitch? Pitch is distance, the linear distance in one complete rotation. So in one complete rotation, we'll need half a millimeter, okay? So pitch is half millimeters. I can write it in meters because we want the answers in meters. So millimeter is 10 to the power minus 3 meters. Right? It is one of the first class that I took on YouTube. Uh, now, the number of uh, circular scale divisions, 50. Right? You can cancel this, uh, 10. So this is 10 to the power minus 3, minus 1, minus 4, and one more minus, right? So minus 5, 10 to the power minus 5 meters, which is option B, okay? I had to do this question twice, so that's why that option was missing. Uh, first time, I was not recording, wow. Uh, uh, let's come to this question. Here, question 7, we have been given uh, to, we are supposed to rule out uh, those 
expressions of kinetic energy which are dimensionally not correct okay so rule out using dimensional analysis so basically the question asks you to ma uh, to match the dimensions on both the sides okay it's not quite necessary you can just see the form look for the form right half mv square okay so let us see uh, if uh, our expression matches this form half mv square you can take dimensions on both the side that will be more rigorous better way of doing it but let's match the form if it matches the form it is kinetic energy right uh, now uh, first one if you see it is m square v cube okay not uh, something like that okay so it cannot uh, be dimensionally correct okay it is incorrect uh, now for second one it is half mv square perfectly correct okay so it matches half mv square it's half doesn't really matter the dimensional analysis only focuses on the quantities right m and v it does not focus on the constant okay let's see this one this one is ma ma is force right force and energy don't have same dimensions so this one also you can say it is dimensionally not correct this one if you see 3 by 16 mv square is this correct it is okay because it is of the same form the constant does not really matter as i told you okay so ha it is of the form mv square that will give you the dimensions of energy here if you see you are adding energy and something of the form of force right you actually cannot add such quantities right only two quantities with the same dimension can be added right uh, this is also dimensionally inconsistent okay this is this cannot represent energy or you are adding energy this is energy fine but this is not energy so you can rule out a c and e which is option d a c e a series one of the best series for bits available on youtube do check it out shout out okay so over to the next question question 8 and 9 over here here we are given an equation very simple one half mv square is equal to mgh basically energy conservation right kinetic energy equal potential energy we are told that uh, all of the quantities have their usual meaning mass velocity acceleration due to gravity height okay uh, you are supposed to comment about the equation is it dimensionally correct incorrect cannot be checked by dimensions or the data is insufficient okay you can clearly see that it is dimensionally correct right Uh, because here also we have energy here also we have energy we can also check the dimensions you will get mlt raised to minus 2 ml2 t raised to minus 2 okay on both sides ml2 t raised to minus 2 those are the dimensions of energy okay so of course this equation is dimensionally consistent or correct okay so option a is the correct choice over here there is no two ways about it okay uh, let's come to question number 9 here we have a physical quantity a that depends on a b c d okay the percentage error in each of this is given so uh, just like the first question 1% 3% 2% and 2% respectively you are supposed to tell what is the percentage error in a okay it's quite simple you know the drill now delta a by a into 100% okay so these have powers you have to be careful so percentage uh, so it depends on a b c d right so two times so power is 2 so 2 times the error in a okay i should have written it directly but any case so 3 times error in b then we have what do we have c c is just power 1 it gets not minus 1 okay in addition in multiplication and division you just uh, um add the relative errors right so it is just 1 okay so delta c by c into 100% plus uh, square root of b now square root what is the power it's power half right so half times uh, delta d by d into 100% okay we can calculate this uh, so if you see it is 2 times error in a is 1% so 2 times 1 which is 2% uh, 3 times the error in b error in b is 3% so 3 3 is a 9 okay uh, plus uh, c error in c just add it and finally the error in um, d half the error in d half the error in d that is 1% so this is 11 11 plus 2 13 13 plus 1 14 very bad measurement very great error right 14% okay so that is your answer okay so just proceeding by the steps we did in question 1 over to the next one in ten over here we are given a dimensional formula we are supposed to tell to what physical quantity does this dimensional formula belong to 
okay this is the final question for the day uh, pets on your back if you made it this far in the video okay so stay motivated and let's do good this time okay so uh, let's come to the question here uh, if you see these quantities are very complicated to get the dimensions of okay so one of my suggestion is to uh, remember one of the easiest way to derive these quantities okay uh, i'm about to tell you a few of those like for electric uh, electric permittivity it's not very simple uh, you can go by coulomb's law only so here you'll have k uh, q square by r square right q1 q2 but yeah for dimensional purposes we can write like this so k will have that epsilon naught right 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught so if you take the dimensions uh, you can get epsilon naught as q square by r square okay also you can see force over here right mlt raised to minus 2 and q square right so it can be something of this form let's check let's check okay so we have q square by r square okay but this is current right this is not charge okay so it's slightly varying so it might be something else but let's check it so epsilon naught goes over here force comes over here right and force is also in the denominator this may not work out okay this will not work out okay so you can find the dimensions of this okay it will not be as same as this because force is going in the denominator i can see it's also r square this is not a square right so yeah uh, this will not match so we can rule that out you can actually find out and see if it's matching from here uh, actually you can use c is equal to 1 upon mu naught epsilon naught and calculate uh, mu naught from here okay this is one of the easier relations to remember to in order to calculate your uh, dimensions of mu naught provided you know dimensions of epsilon naught okay so i think mu naught might match to this option this force right force and i square okay i square okay it it is matching okay uh, i'll talk to you about that okay so epsilon naught you can find like this then you can find mu naught okay and i'll show you that it's matching i'll do it by some other way uh, it strike to me now uh, now for magnetic flux you can use phi is b dot a right b a cos theta but that cos theta doesn't really matter for your dimensional purposes so you can use uh, b a right flux is b a and this b how will you find a is fine okay a is area over here not ampere so a is area b is what uh, b you can find using uh, current for his experience due to a wire right il cross b okay this is the easiest to find easiest way to find magnetic field remember this okay il cross b but this cross product doesn't really matter so you can use il b and uh, find b from here uh, i is current l is length okay so from here you can find b substitute over here you can find magnetic flux again that will not match okay you can try uh, for self inductance again now if you have find v uh, sorry find phi okay so that will give you uh, this right uh, your self inductance so you are supposed to know all this formula in the entirety of physics and the easiest version to find a particular physical quantity like for b you should remember the easiest way to find dimensions of b is this using this relation for c or uh, sorry for mu naught it's this or uh, one more way i'm going to show you um, now ldi by dt okay now from here you know phi you have calculated it just now uh, you can use di by dt di basically has the dimensions of current dt is time okay so you can find the dimensions of l okay again you'll see it will not match the so finally this thing will match okay since it is if you see this is force and area square okay so it strike me that uh, uh, we can use force per unit length right we write force per unit length as mu 0 i1 i2 you might remember this relation uh, 4 pi r is it 2 pi r or 4 pi r 4 pi r i guess but that doesn't really matter over here uh, so here from here you can see that uh, if you want to find the dimensions of mu naught it's basically force per unit length okay for unit length it is messing it up so m l uh, mass into acceleration per unit length and okay there is also r over here okay so it's working out perfectly um, and i1 i2 i1 i2 is current right so a square and here also we'll have l of the radius okay or the not the radius the distance perpendicular distance from the wire 
So L and L will get cancelled and you can see that finally mu naught, the dimensions of mu naught are the one that you are given in the question. So this is one more easy way of finding the dimensions of mu naught. Okay, you don't have to find epsilon naught and then proceed to mu naught. This is one easier way. Right? So M L sorry, M L T raised to minus two, that is force, and A raised to minus two. Okay, this goes on the other side. So A raised to minus two. So magnetic permeability mu naught um, has the dimension M L T raised to minus two, A raised to minus two. Okay, so that's the final question for the day. I hope you really enjoyed this series and will join me in the episodes that are going to come in the future. Drop a like. Do let me know that you loved this series in the comment section below. Based on your responses, I will get the videos earlier. It will motivate me to work on this and get the content out to you earlier. Okay, so that's about today's video. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed it. I'll see you soon in the next one. Till, till then, keep enjoying physics.